This video was brought to you by a better planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, Stormberg, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now at Nebenes Supercharger in an ID bus. And you know, this is a V2 supercharger, and I discovered something interesting. Okay, this is the kilowatt reported by the app, 146. Oh, nice! Well, but it's as, it's, it is as expected, right? Because this is a V3, it's supposed to be maximum 150 kilowatt. Well, except for if you look closer here. So HVAC is off, cooling is off, AC compressor is off. And then, let me see, let me turn down here. So you see that 375 amp, that is usually the max you get from V2 supercharger. And then the voltage is a bit low, that's why we are getting 135 kilowatt into the battery. And then, wait, 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 so there's 11 kilowatt loss here somewhere, right? Well, actually not, or, or yes or no. Um, I discovered this with the uh, Maxus MIFA 9, is that the MIFA also, when the MIFA was charging at supercharger V2, it was reporting getting 130 kilowatt, but I got only around 120 something into the battery. And then after some testing now, it seems like, you know, at one point Tesla said that they will start charging you money for losses. Uh, previously, when you charge a Tesla, if you use the heater, if you uh, use whatever uh, losses, uh, they only charge you for whatever goes into the battery. But at one point they said you have to pay for losses and uh, what does that mean well apparently they they measure um loss in the charger which is a bit weird because when you look at chem power or the rest of the car industry chem power ionity or you know, all the other charge port operators with other charging stations like like uh, delta or whatever they actually charge you for whatever comes out of the plug but here, how the heck can it be like this? Well, because Tesla V2 will actually measure uh, before some DC conversion loss or something. Yeah, so this is like, this is something, I don't know, from the grid, I'm not sure where it is, but it's only for V2. So if also you look at the kilowatt hour here versus the kilowatt hour you gain and shit like that, um, you're actually paying, I calculated, it's roughly 6% more. Um, but the strange thing is that this only applies to V2 supercharger. On V3 and V4, um, you don't have this, this uh, uh, diff here. Then, then on V3, V4, you will see that uh, whatever the, the app reports is the one that goes into the battery. <laughs> so um yeah this is an interesting discovery it actually means that if you're charging on v2 supercharger you're actually paying five percent more five six percent more which is basically the the dc charging conversion loss thing uh, <laughs> so is this a bug or is does it work as intended um yeah i don't know but you, we are obviously not getting this this one what, what, what you can do is you can do the math. You, well, actually, you can already do the math. This one multiplied it. This one is that one. And we don't have 11 kilowatt heat loss right now. That, 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 I don't know. That, that doesn't work, man. So you can even see here the rate of the uh, cool, I mean, the, the battery heating up. It's not 11 kilowatt. So um, it's just, um, yeah, charging loss. So uh, I wonder if I'm one of the few one or the, maybe the first one to discover this. So uh, if you can choose, you should go for V3 or V4 because you're paying 5% more <laughs> on the V2. <laughs> uh, does it matter? Nah, probably not because this is still dirt cheap. It costs 2.2 nook per kilowatt hour. So this side is uh, very, very cheap compared to, for example, yeah, you see 2.2 nook per kilowatt hour or with membership pricing and stuff, uh, but still less than 3 nook per kilowatt hour, right? And then over there at recharge, you are paying uh, roughly double, around 6 nook per kilowatt hour. So that's why everyone and the mother with at least CCS port, they come here and they charge. <laughs> there was also another uh, non-Tesla on the other side. Uh, let me see, yeah, 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 let me see what it is. So that's why these guys, they don't charge at recharge, they charge at Tesla, <laughs> supercharger instead. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, interesting. And we will see what Tesla say to this. Uh, and if they, we should test eventually 
in, I don't know, a couple of weeks, months and see. And you guys should also test, by the way, uh, to see if you get the same result as me. You need to have some kind of OBD tool or something and you will see a difference in a V2, supposedly. Uh, and now I tested in MIFA, I tested here in the in the ID bus and I get the same result, the same diff here, whatever. Uh, so um, eventually Tesla might change this and we will see what they do. Are they going to apply the, the, the lo you have to pay for the losses in the V3 or V4 also? Was that a glitch that they forget to think about? Maybe, uh, my theory is that they, they implemented the loss, uh, pay for the losses in the V2, but they forgot to implement it on V3 and V4. Or they might remove it because to be honest, I think they should just raise the price by 5% and then remove this thing because it, it is misleading and confusing because when you look at the app, you think, oh yeah, I'm charging on 146 kilowatt. No, you're charging on 133 kilowatt. And by the way, uh, what about the car? What is the car reporting? Well, guess what? No, shit, that's kilowatt hour per hour. Uh, I've got, you have to go here, you have to go here. What is the car reporting? 134 kilowatt. 134, 134, 146. <laughs> Which one do you trust? Do you trust the car screen, the BMS or Tesla? <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, uh, interesting discovery. So let me know what you guys think about this. Huh? That's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.